Hey guys, welcome back to Crazy TV. So in today's case, I have a crazy, crazy story. Although this case happened a while ago in early 2000s, still to this day, Lady Yum is said to have the highest record for the psychopath test for a female. So there's a psychopath test called PCLR, and this score or this checklist is out of 40 points. They say were 40 scores, and she has scored every single one of this checklist, meaning she has 40 out of 40. In the psychopath test, and still to this day, there is no female in South Korea, particularly, that has passed the score 40 out of 40. So, before we get started, we have another sponsor for today's video. You guys know sponsors help out, especially Crazy TV. And thank you to Keen. I talked about Keen in my previous videos. Keen is an easy, affordable way where you could talk to online psychic. If you guys have any life challenges, clarity in love, relationships, career, if you want to talk to your spiritual guides or ancestors like I have, I'm gonna be talking about my experience with. Keen and my advisors. Keen is also celebrating National Psychics Day, which is August 2nd, and they're having a promotion to their email list and current customers. So this is a perfect time to try a Keen and talk to psychics. So I've talked to a couple advisors on Keen this week, and one of my questions that I had for the psychics was talking to my ancestors or getting like an energy checkup with my spiritual guide. She said that there was a group of spiritual guides that are watching over me, but especially there's that one main person was she's a female, which I've got that a lot in the Past. She basically again reaffirmed that whatever I was doing, especially whatever I want to do in the world, that I was on the right path, which is always like a good assurance because sometimes I'm lost if I'm on the right path with my music, with what I'm doing with you guys. I'm not gonna be saying in the video, but she did confirm one thing. I was super assured and I'm really good now. As a new King customer, you guys will get your first 10 minutes for $1.99. If I'm allowed, I will link down below the lady that I connected with that I really liked. You guys can go to tryking.com slash Crazy TV to try your first 10 minutes for $1.99 and let me know what your experience is with talking to psychics or medium. And I hope that whatever life questions you guys have in your mind right now that it will be resolved. Thank you again, King. All right, you guys, the Lady Yum. She is an interesting character because we talked about psychopath in the previous videos that I had. You guys could go and watch it, super interesting. But this lady just pushed the limits for everything. Like, I'm not really sure how she even got away with it for the five years or even more. So, this case happened back in early 2000. It's been probably almost 20 years now. Um, it's been about 15 years since she has been arrested. Lady Yum was born in 1976 and people described her as being born from a pretty wealthy family or I should say a well-off family. It's not like she had any troubles with money and she grew up well. They said that she was tall, had a nice figure, and most importantly she had a pretty face. Now, I got this information online. Now this is just a reference. The celebrity has nothing to do with Lady Yum. But because Lady Yum's face was never revealed to the public, we really don't know what she looks like. But just to give a reference, her friends and family say that she looks like the actress Park Jin Hee. Pale face, just very kind looking, you know, very beautiful, I guess, in the eyes of a man. But one downside of Lady Yum was that she really loved to spend money pretty carelessly, and she always had cash around her bag, like lots of cash in her bag, and she would just spend it, spend it, spend it. But let's take a history of her life and what happened happened within these years. She was married in her early 20s and she had a daughter with her first husband. Now we don't know much about what happened to her daughter because she was never technically charged but it was said that her first daughter died while playing from a high ground meaning like she fell from somewhere high. I'm not sure it was in her house or in a playground. We don't know. This information is really vague. Shortly after she decided that she doesn't like her husband anymore or whatever is going through her mind, she decided to give sleeping pills inside a drink. She gave it to her husband and while her husband was basically on sleeping pills and he was totally asleep, she poked his eye with a bobby pin and made him go blind. Now I'm sure you're thinking, well, I mean, did the family not notice what kind of person she was? Now the family and friends of the first husband and Lady Yum's family say that she was always so pure, so kind. She seemed so generous and wanted to take care of her husband and they noticed nothing wrong about her. Now, now her husband's blind and about a year later, she decided to pour hot oil on her husband's face, making him have severe burns. He survived and just a couple months later, that's when she decided to stab him. Now 
the first time she stabbed him with a kitchen knife, he did not pass away. So a little bit later, she decided to stab him again. Now he was taken to a hospital and unfortunately because of organ failures, he ended up passing away. Now you guys might be thinking, why is his husband not noticing that the wife is doing something cruel to him? We're not sure because he ended up passing away. So we don't know his side of the story of what he thought or what he was tricked to. We're guessing that she probably convinced him and his family that something horrific happened while he was sleeping. And the fact that he's blind puts a major disadvantage in him um, trying to figure out who even was trying to hurt him. Now, there needs to be a story of why her husband was being harmed all the time. She tried to pass on the story that he was self-harming himself all this time. And after that, she was able to claim over $200,000 in insurance money. Now, her first husband passed away, the daughter passed away, and she needed a new husband. Now, after her first husband's death, within a couple months, less than a year, she met her new husband and they got remarried. It was said that she met this person at a club and they just fell in love right away and they decided to even have a child together. Now, she was pregnant at this time and of course, of course, no one saw it coming that her second husband also would be harmed. Only nine months into this new relationship, she ended up doing the same tactic to her second husband by giving him sleeping pills inside a drink. And while he was dead asleep, she again poked him in the eye with a bobby pin. Now it is said that if you poke someone in the eye, um, your eye basically swells up and it is closed. So you can't even open and see what's going on at all. You're literally blind. Now by this time, her second husband going blind, you might think people might notice. Well, the second husband's family say that they didn't notice anything about Lady Yum. And when he was in the hospital for the blind eye, she was there treating him. You know, she was like taking care of her husband. So the family actually thought, wow, she's an amazing wife. As you guys can see, her actress level, her acting skill level is, is Oscar worthy. She was able to convince the second husband's family. It was said that even after the blindness, her husband would frequently visit the hospital with injuries that no one could really Describe. A couple months later, the husband ended up going to the hospital again for bad health or something was going on. The family of the husband visited him in the hospital and they said he was totally healthy. He was going to be out of the hospital in maybe a couple days or a couple hours and he was totally fine. Now, it was that day after midnight when the family just went to visit him that he ended up passing away. The family was really shocked because they thought he was super healthy. He was talking I and mean, he was with his wife and they were totally fine. How can he pass away so suddenly? The family of the husband told Lady Yum, you know, you should just abort the baby and start a new life because the husband has passed away and I feel bad for you. Lady Yum told the family that no, 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 you know, I want to have this baby. There's no way I could abort the baby. That I want to do this to continue his legacy and that we're still connected by souls. The family actually said, they were touched by what she said and the fact that she wanted to have this baby. And she basically ended up acting as a great in-law. Now soon after her new husband's death, this is when she was again able to claim that insurance money. After she claimed the insurance money, she actually cut ties and ran away from her second husband's family. Soon after, the family found out that everything she told them about her was a lie. She told the husband's family while they were dating that she actually went to college for child education that she worked as a teacher in nursery and that Lady Yum's mother had $1 million waiting for her under her will. Another shady thing was that while her husband was still alive and was in the hospital, she actually went to go get the marriage certificates, basically eloped without her husband. Now the family believed that she did this without her second husband knowing because she was actually planning to kill him and to take his insurance money. Now you guys have to be legally married in order to claim the husband's insurance money. So she was planning this for a long time. Now she has all these insurance money, thousands of dollars, and they were saying that she was spending this money on clothes, on alcohol, on partying, just whatever she wanted. Now a year later, I guess she ended up just spending all the money and she needed to find her next target. You will not believe who her next target is. It was her own mother and brothers. Now she one day went into her mother's house and said, oh, 
Oh my god, mother, I have this drink for you that's really good for your body. She put some sleeping pills in there. She also did this to her younger brother. And while they were dead asleep, she did the same thing with poking their eyes and making them go blind. While her brother was in the hospital getting treated, the sick thing is she went into the hospital and while no one was looking, she actually tried to insert poison into her brother's IV. Now, fortunately, this tactic has failed and he was okay, but she she was super angry. She she really wanted that money. Now she was somehow able to convince her mother and a family that they had to sell their apartments for whatever that was under their name. So again, with the money that she earned from the apartments that was under her family name, she started spending the money on clothes, alcohol, food, whatever she wanted. And that is when her family started to get suspicious. Like, you sold the apartment, where is the money? So that's when she decided, I need to get rid of my family. A couple months later, she went into the apartment where her brothers were living in, her older brother and younger brother, and she lit that apartment on fire where the brothers received severe burn damage. But again, fortunately, they ended up surviving. She was still unsatisfied and it seemed like the family was kind of getting suspicious and she had nowhere to go. So she told her old babysitter that she just wanted a place for about a month. And the babysitter said she took Lady Yum in because she just felt bad for her because she was a solo mother. Now about a month passed, it was the day that Lady Lady Yum was supposed to leave the house and get a place for her own. This was a day when Lady Yum decided to lit her babysitter's house on fire. Fire. So the apartment ended up getting on fire and the babysitter's husband ended up passing away. She survived and the babysitter's daughter that was also in the house ended up getting severe burns. Instead of thanking the babysitter or your friend for letting you stay in the house, she repaid them with evil deeds. Now in total, with all her husband's death, with her mother and her family's going blind, she was able to claim about $600,000 in insurance benefit. Now the interesting thing about the insurance, I'm not sure if this is how it works still now, but back then was that when a person dies, that's when you get the most money from the insurance. They say the second most benefits that you will get is if someone goes blind. She definitely knew that death, blindness, and fire will get her the most insurance benefits. Now fast forward, this is when she is about to get caught. She still has that son with that second husband and the son was very young still and it was reported that her son had Kawasaki disease. Now this disease has to do something with the skin and things like that that and she was going in and out of the hospital very frequently. Unfortunately, because she spent all the money, she had no money to pay for her son's hospital bills. Now, what is she going to do? The next victim was a lady she met at the hospital. I believe she was also a, a, a patient or a customer at the hospital and she somehow one day stole the credit card of this lady. Lady Yum then used this credit card to pay for her son's hospital bills. She also paid for like shopping and things like that and of course she was going to get caught because because it's credit card. Now shortly after, unfortunately, her son ended up passing away in the hospital. Now this part is a little unclear because she was never charged with it. Um, a lot of people do think that she was involved, but a lot of people also think that the son might have died due to Kawasaki disease. Although here it says that this disease is pretty much treatable, so we don't know what really happened. She decided to meet up the lady that she stole the credit card from and she started acting. She needed money for her son's hospital and she's super sad and that is when the lady she stole the credit card from kind of felt bad for her and she decided to invite her to her house. Now I'm not sure if she invited her in or she needed like a night to stay in. This is when Lady Yum also decided to get rid of her because she did not want to pay back her credit cards. Lady Yum used the same tactics by offering her a sleeping pill which I'm not sure why you would even take someone else's sleeping pill. But this lady unfortunately ended up taking the sleeping pill and again she she woke up having a bobby pin in her eyes and going almost blind. Now this lady ended up going to the hospital with Lady Yum and Lady Yum decided that she wanted to really get rid of her and the only way to do that was to lit the hospital on fire. So this is what she did. She decided to lit the hospital on fire and she was caught after her actions was caught on CCTV footage. Now when she was finally caught, she was interrogated and the police asked her, why did you do all these things? What was the need for these insurance money? 
Lady Yum responded, I am addicted to drugs and I wanted to get my hands on more drugs. So the police did some testing on her, you know, the urine testing and blood testing and they found absolutely no drugs in her system. That was a lie. Lady Yum then explained that she took medicine to flush out the drugs in her body, which was not true again, so she lied again. Now in her court papers, she tried to use Shimshin Miyak as her excuse. Shimshin Miyak is using the insane category. If you are claimed as insane, I think you get lesser sentence. The court fortunately decided that she is not insane. She's not going to use this law and she was basically sent to prison. I cannot find how long she's sent to prison, but I'm hoping that she is sent life in prison because this lady is dangerous. When the family of the second husband and other family came to see her during court, they were so angry because she was absolutely no remorse and she was using self-rationalization. Meaning it's basically giving excuses of why she did these things. She was basically blaming her children's death for all these crazy actions. That she was just so sad that her children passed away and that's the reason why she acted this way and she lashed out. Now experts, psychologists categorized her as having a borderline personality disorder. Individuals with this disorder usually have tendencies to frequently lie, have very up and down mood swings, and very sensitive emotions. There's also a couple signs to being psychopaths. And number one is using your charm and lies to get what you want and using every single person around them. Number two is having no remorse and always having self-rationalization. Again, excuses for everything. Next is experts say that usually when it comes to a normal person, you know, you're able to read someone's personality or what they're thinking or feeling at the moment based on their facial expression. But with the psychopath, you are not able to guess or even know what they're thinking and feeling. What they're showing on their face does not match up to what is going on inside here, which is the scariest. At the end, we found out that the reason why she got married, the reason why she had kids, was to kill them at the end for money. Someone was saying that should a psychopath get the therapy treatment that they need and can they be healed and fixed? Or even if they got therapy, do you think this is just the way they were born and you can never change them? I would really love to know what you guys thought about this case and remember you guys go to trykeen.com slash crazytv to talk to your psychic advisors and let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you guys in my next video.